Damn, homie. I just took a fat ass rip. And that gave me the idea that I could do a useful video based on all the secrets I've learned over the last decade of how to be a good little celibate man living in the USSA well I can't really say USSA because I pretty much had to go into seclusion and isolation in order to sustain myself uh, because sex is everywhere and bitches be throwing sex at you constantly uh, with their dress and so forth So I always remember that quote, um, le petit morte, that phrase. That means um, the little death. It's another word for orgasm in French. So um, having sex does not just cost energy, but it, uh, physically, but it also costs, um, also has an impact in drains your emotional and your uh, psychic qualities too so like in the Quran it says when men are fasting from sex during the month of Ramadan they are to avoid the company of females so um, <clears throat> today in American society it's hard to find places where you can avoid the company of females but I have found that uh, there are men's Bible studies out there. Truck stops are a male only space pretty much. And uh, smoke lounges. Some cigarette tobacco smoke lounges are male only spaces too. Uh, uh, but uh, most MGTOW guys or incels probably don't even have a car today with the economy. So, um, it's, uh, it's very common to have isolating males and, uh, people basically neglected by society. And they're going to label them as terrorists because, uh, they don't want to own up to the responsibility in ruining these individuals and destroying their lives, bodies and minds. Uh, so they're going to, uh, try to take them, keep them down and take them out. As I've witnessed several times in my life. <clears throat> but yeah, back to my original point. Even looking at a woman in the eye, much less at her body, can provoke a sexual desire in a man. So it's best to um, basically ignore them best you can. But if you're in a social setting like I learned, Ignoring them can get to a bad reputation very quickly. So, uh, it's really tough today in USSA to go uh, celibate voluntarily, man or a woman. <clears throat> so, like, um, eventually you can get to a point where you don't think about sex so much, not even once a day, but it takes a lot of effort. Um, you have to constantly have other topics to divert yourself to. I became pretty much sex obsessed or masturbation obsessed in the lockdown because I was spending too much time uh, researching gender and a lot of these channels uh, it's a very sexually um, suggestive topic, basically, so, um, yeah, I think that made me a little sex uh, addicted, too, <laughs> during the lockdown. Um, so it's, a it's important what um, subject matter you uh, open your mind up to. Um, in Hinduism, they talk about, like, 
uh, doing a lot of prayer and stuff, so just doing more spiritual stuff and more intellectual stuff, more dry intellectual stuff will keep you on the right path in your everyday activities. <clears throat> if you have the fortune to be able to avoid the company and dictate what goes into uh, your mind throughout the day, And diet is also important. Um, fasting is very good for celibacy. So if you have too much lust, you can always fast and control it that way. Uh, basically, you just weaken your body. So once your body is weak, um, or put, your, put it in danger. But a lot of artificial danger just increases stress and doesn't heal you. So, like, going in a real dangerous situation would be a um, way to control your celibacy, too. Uh, hopefully, I think. But um, I've never been in the military, so I haven't really lived that lifestyle. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was going through rough patches in life, uh, I wasn't thinking so much about sex or trying to flirt with girls. or I would even feel disgusted while masturbating to porn because I was like, like, this is very unnatural, you know? I should be uh, trying to seek female uh, company in real life, so... Uh, yeah, I kind of just like... Um, but then I became self-destructive then, too. <coughs> but yeah, being in danger and being hungry and uh, going through a rough time, basically. Uh, that's a good uh, preventative. If you can't just avoid... Um, the company if he fails and uh, out and about in, the, in your lifestyle situation and uh, I found chicken for example I don't know if it's the hormones in the meat or what but chicken is like very aphrodisiac even more so than eggs uh, even though according to Ayurveda eggs should be more aphrodisiac but actually yeah muscle a lot of muscle meat is very aphrodisiac for some reason um, it must just have more hormones in it or something. Uh, so when I was, um, vegan or vegetarian and celibate half a decade ago, I remember I would eat a lot of uh, rice and beans and vegetables with oil, of course, and seeds. And I would also eat, uh, I would also drink milk. But I found milk was very uh, aphrodisiac. It would generate a lot of semen. Uh, that was my problem. <laughs> because uh, I was trying not to discharge semen. So it's like um, certain foods would, like for example, chicken would make me more lustful. It would give me an erection. It was like a Vicodin. It still is. But um, on the other hand, uh, when I would eat <clears throat> vegetarian, it would it would kind of make me gassy too, but it would also keep my body kind of weak. So uh, it was kind of like starvation almost, pretty much. And when I would drink milk and rice, which is what I would eat, and uh, very aphrodisiac nuts and uh, raisins, then I would feel more aphrodisiac -y. Or I'd feel like my semen was more expanded or whatever. And I would probably get an erection too, but not as bad as the chicken. Because I really feel chicken has, and meat has hormones. Even lamb is very aphrodisiac, lamb meat. Um, but I don't know about organs. Organs probably less so. Uh, yeah. Because it's not even a muscle. <laughs> His penis is a muscle, so if you eat muscle, you're going to grow your muscle. But uh, if you eat organs, then it's going to go more inside, internally. And that's why they have more uh, minerals too, more long-term nutrients. Organs are the way to go, but um, vegetarianism, yeah, it's good for celibacy. And also a lot of uh, time in nature, just in very cooling places because this, there's a lot of chemicals just living indoors. When you go out and hiking and go out uh, trekking, not only you're burning up your physical energy, which otherwise would go towards uh, lustful thoughts as an instinct in order to 
boost metabolism. Uh, so if you already naturally keep your metabolism high, then you're going to have less uh, desire for sex. Your body's going to have less need for sex. Because even Ayurveda says that you burn the sperm off while you're exercising too. The heat, uh, basically, burns it off. But yeah, watching your media, careful, being careful about the media you obs uh, observe. I mean, I would watch Hollywood movies during this period. And just having a sex scene would be enough to break my uh, fast, basically, you know, and get my mind kind of back to that sexual uh, thinking. And then thinking about masturbating or getting more erections and so forth. So yeah, rough lifestyle, diet restrictions, and uh, being careful where you are and what you are um, taking in to your senses. <clears throat> But then, uh, one thing that was very helpful was also tub baths, um, saunas and stuff, but cold is better. <laughs> and uh, no, it can be lukewarm too, or warm, especially if you've uh, done an oil massage beforehand. Oil massages are great too. I actually did a thing on my uh, 13 unrestricted retrainable urges and that I talk about the solutions for um, not ejaculating there's certain lifestyle changes you can make when you're not having sex in order to compensate for the fact that you're ejaculating not ejaculating which is one of the body's needs so like oil massages uh, tummy rubs and um, tub baths, certain medicines, uh, what else? And I think, I don't know, but uh, those things you can do. Also, you can, you can squat when you're peeing. So the p position you do to shit in the woods, the same squatting position you could pee. And if you don't get, uh, if you don't uh, ejaculate as often, you'll have more gas down there. And I think gas even goes into your uh, <laughs> urinary uh, canal because it's like, um, yeah, uh, you you if you don't ejaculate as often, you'll have more gas problems. And uh, if you sit or you squat and you pee, then that gas also gets released more easily. So, for people with prostate problems, very common. And that's a good idea. Even to shit in that pose is better than in the toilet because it puts more pressure and totally helps you evacuate better, I find. But I found that aloe vera, putting aloe vera juice from the fresh plant, and maybe even coconut oil very cooling things on your penis can also I I've used them to masturbate and it's like it doesn't it seems to like um, make me last longer or it decreases the um, muscle tension so it's like I don't I'm not as eager to uh, ejaculate anymore basically so I don't know just being cool minded can also be good. That's why bitches are always trying to provoke, uh, provoke you, because that, because uh, that's like a abusive tactic, a sexual uh, kind of uh, sadomasochistic tactic to get sexual attention. So anyway, um, what was I saying? Uh, 
Yeah, just being careful where you are, what you eat, what you take in. Yeah, what you take in is very important. Ahara. Um, that can help with the brahmacharya, which is another pillar of life, along with nidra, or sleep. Brahmacharya is uh, the right way, or celibacy even, can be translated as. <coughs> Oh yeah, and uh, you should definitely wash your penis after you pee, and uh, wash it regularly with cold water. That's supposed to be good for maintaining celibacy. Exercise, massage. Being very careful about your food choices. Those are the most important things I've found. And if you're going to avoid places where females are predominant or common, that's the easiest way, really. Because when there's only a guys, there's a different energy. And when there's a few females, there's a different energy. When it's majority females, it's a totally different energy, so uh, guys like to be around guys usually, um, and females like to invade male spaces because they're the biggest rapists of them all. And it's true, most children are abused by females much more. They, uh, it's only that the females target the weak, the ones who have no chance to resist because they're more fearful of getting injured so anyway that was some tips I thought about uh, for maintaining celibacy tobacco is another good one tobacco is an anti-aphrodisiac so smoking it definitely is good for maintaining celibacy cannabis on the other hand it's good to distract your mind and go through uh, life changes, but it does increase um, the generation of sperm, so it's actually aphrodisiac. But if you mix it with tobacco, it's a little less aphrodisiac -y. But I feel I masturbate more when I smoke weed, so I don't know. Hard to tell. But yeah, it, uh, instantly it, it does tend to make you more uh, easier to uh, stimulate. <laughs> I haven't really done enemas. They say they're good for prostate and issues. I hear you can even orgasm through anal sex for a man. That's crazy. Like some kind of prostate massage or something. So that would give their penis a break. <laughs> oh man. But I haven't tried that. Oh yeah, I think you should have a picture of your grandma or some really old lady who is not sexually appealing and anytime you get aroused you could always look at that. That tends to help. In fact I gotta put that as my wallpaper. Anyway, uh, yeah those were my ideas. That's all I can think of right now. Just roughing it out. Diet wise, environment wise, and danger too helps. Alright, Kunal checking out with another episode. No, 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 episode with a. Yeah, with a um, Eastern philosophy. Back to the 
yoga. Peace out.